So the Cowboys get pummeled by the Eagles on Sunday. We can all agree on that. After the game, Micah Parsons appeared to take a shot at his own head coach, Mike McCarthy. It certainly sounded that way to our Rex Ryan, who responded here on Get Up. And then Micah Parsons responded to that on his podcast. Here was all of it. Well, that's above my pay grade about if Mike is coaching again next year. Um, but, you know, I, all coaching aside, coaching, you know, Mike can leave and go wherever he wants. But the guys, I, you know, I kind of feel bad for his guys like Zach Martin and guys who might be on their last year on their way out, you know, because that's who I wanted to hold the trophy for. You know, you want to win games and do great things with those type of legends who put in more time and work than Mike McCarthy ever did. So those are the kind of guys that I have so much sympathy and hurt for. Why the hell do you think you need to say that? That that why do you need to hurt this man? Who do you think is blamed for everything? He gets it anyway. And so why are you piling on? All right. Yeah. Dead man walking. Yeah, he is. But you know what? He's professional as hell. He hadn't once blamed a damn player, ever. It, it's bull I never once threw or even intended to throw Mike McCarthy under the bus. Like I said, he's one of the most winningest coach. He is a Super Bowl champ. I never once brung up his past. I'm talking, and the question that was asked was about here in the Dallas Cowboys, did I see Mike McCarthy in our future? And I said, that's above my pay grade. So never once did I ever intended or wanted to reflect on Mike McCarthy's career because I always knew it was a good one. I've always had a great relationship with Mike McCarthy and I never even put that in question. And for a guy like Rex Ryan, I just know he wanted to coach the Cowboys. So that was my day yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, good day. So we got uh, both sides. Of, you heard all of that. And by the way, Mike McCarthy and the Micah Parsons did get together yesterday and talk things through. And, 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 and uh, Mike McCarthy said something to the effect of, that Micah Parsons never meant to, uh, you know, attack me or whatever. So now it's all on the table. Reaction to it. Let's go. Jeff, what? I, I agree, actually, with Micah. And it sounds good. The only thing I would have said is the second time he brought up McCarthy's name, he probably should have just left it at that, right? So um, just not – because I do think players as a whole, we play for each other. I, and I get – we, we love head coaches that we have, but it's a different relationship. I'm not sure every fan understands the relationship between players and head coach. We, we do like our, not as much as we like the guys who cross those white lines and walk out there and go do it. And so I think he was trying to talk about the Zach Martins, the Diggs, maybe some guys, uh, or even Lawrence, who may not be there with them that they've, they've won these 12 games three years in a row, quite, haven't quite and got done what they want to get done. I don't think he was intentionally trying to slight Mike McCarthy. But let, let, me, let me set that aside for just a second. Because we all, at this desk and desks that are here five days a week, fire coaches constantly. Constantly, bro. Like, I, I, it, it, it is beyond me how many times we get up here and be like, hey, he's gone, dead man walking. And he is, right? Like, that's exactly what Rex just said. We do it all the time. As players, we're, we, it's not like we don't know that. We're, we're, you know, we understand the game as well as, as others do. So he understands the situation he's in. He wasn't trying to indict Mike McCarthy and say, hey, he, he's the reason we haven't done this. He was, I think he was trying to lend it to players. And so I, I just want to make sure that we all understand we all take shots at coaches, and that is the responsibility of the head coach. They're always going to take the heat, and they get paid a lot. Of, Mike Tomlin said it best. That's why I get that big paycheck. He ain't worried about it. Mike McCarthy's not worried about it either, right? He understands what he signed up for. It hasn't gone great. But at the end of the day, I think Micah was trying to say something good about Zach Martin, and it just got misconstrued. If that's what he was trying to say, then that's what he should have said. And at some point along the line, even in his clarification, at no point has he stepped up and clarified what he was trying to say. And what you're saying makes perfect sense to me. Right. I understand that. There is a dividing line between the guys that go out there on the field and the guys who wear headsets. Right. And as much as we like and love some of our coaches is different like and to Micah's point Zach Martin and some of those guys their careers are coming to a close that's right and Mike McCarthy has had a long career won a Super Bowl and could go coach somewhere else again like right. the, it never really you never really run out of time when you come to coaching so that's probably what he's trying to say but the problem is at some point you gotta actually say it yeah he hasn't said it that's and fair. He's, he's, he's on his help us make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update we're closing in on 12,000 subscribers, and we'd love your support to help us reach that goal. Podcast say, look, what I was trying to say, because what you did say, it came across like saying, like, our coach doesn't work very hard. Right. And you left it up to chance. And it's also believable because 
It's the Cowboys. A couple weeks ago, you just did a top 10 quarterbacks list, and you left Dak off that list. You, I don't see you coming out apologizing for that and saying that that was wrong. And it's all, it's all a circumstance that is created by the owner where he encourages being entertaining over being effective football players. And it's something, it's a, it's a paradigm that he's created there where last offseason you had players' families coming out and talking bad about the quarterback. It's just something that's acceptable that um, Jerry Jones creates an atmosphere where you send a lame duck coach in there, you don't give him a contract extension, he's in his final year, and you – you don't show him any respect, so why are the players supposed yeah. to? Yeah, just so people understand, and I know I've made this point before, a Cowboy game ends, and as a member of the media, if you're covering any, literally any other team, you go one of two places. You go in the locker room, talk to the players, or you go in the press conference room, talk to the coach. If you're covering the Cowboys, you stand outside the locker room, wait for Jerry Jones to emerge, and then he gives a little bit of a press conference, uh, and then you go in the locker room, and maybe if, my, if Mike McCarthy's press conference hasn't ended yet, you go and catch the tail end of that. Really? It's very, yes, that's how it works. Wow. It's incredible. Uh, but that's that's it. I mean, all the beat writers are all there. All the TV cameras are all there waiting for Jerry to come out and talk. So he's the center of it all. And I think Dominique's absolutely right. Like, this is the atmosphere there, right? It, it's it's everyone's sort of waiting for someone to say something that we can jump all over and dissect. And Micah oftentimes delivers. And I think you're absolutely right. In this case, if he had just made his point and his pivot to Zach Martin and never said Mike McCarthy's name again, we don't even have this content right. to work with. But once he says more hours than Mike, and I can give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. He's saying Zach Martin's been here 11 years. Right, right, Mike right. McCarthy's been here four or five. Zach Martin's a bigger part of the fiber of this place. He has right. bled more uh, for this place than, than, than any really any coach. So uh, I can get it. But, you know, the way he phrased that was unfortunate and put him in a, a little bit of hot water. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 th I get where he's coming from. But, yeah. you know, he probably could have handled it better. That was me, the first place yeah. that reporters yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so let me say this. If that, if, and that's fact because he, you've done it for forever. I was there Sunday. I, 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 that's what he, Nick's point is over the top truth because if if the first stop is to the owner and not to the head coach, you're gonna have organizational issues. I'm just telling you right now. Like I can remember Bill Polian every year and Jim Irsay, they would speak to the Indianapolis Colts one time a year. Yes. And every other, they would look and defer to whoever the heck, whether it was Jim Moore, Tony Dungy, Jim Caldwell, and literally say, "We have one voice in this building. Get it from there." And you did not circumvent that. Did you go to the owner after the game? Every game. The dude's sitting in the press, box. and he does a radio show on Tuesdays. Yeah, that's also, we will hear from I, yeah. him. We'll hear from Jerry Jones in an hour. And I mean, that just makes I mean, Nick's I, point I, so strong because I didn't. I didn't not know that I mean I literally just knew I mean you may have said it that hits me right between the eyes because you're no wonder you don't have respect as a head coach because no one's gonna it, everything's gonna be deferred to the owner and not that guy that's just it's an impossible way to win yeah I play for three teams and I think I saw the owners uh, of those teams maybe two or three times you see them at the Christmas party you yeah, see them that's right. on the sideline at, at, after a big win yeah. and that's about it you don't see them on TV oh. you don't see them milling around in the locker room yeah. they stay out of the way and I played for organizations I was fortunate enough to play for organizations that were Stable and yeah. run well and won and, and, won and yeah. had focus on those things from Denver to Atlanta to Baltimore. These were organizations where the ownership was stable and understood how wow. to run a franchise. Even the GM, like you mentioned, Paul, yeah. Jerry's also the GM of the right, Cowboys. Right. But you don't hear the GM talk after no. games. They, I mean, they, they, they rep, absolutely. My time's the off season. The head coach, you'll know, go to him during the season. Right. GM has to, I believe, talk once a year, like he usually does in the right. bye week. Uh, but that's that's Ozzy Newsom is probably the best GM in the history yeah. of professional football. He was a ghost. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like he would hang around the backside of practice. He wouldn't talk to players. And, yeah, I mean he would talk to us like, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't like. And then the, the cameras show up. Ozzy. And his successor, Man. Eric DaCosta, yeah, follows in his footsteps. Wow. We never hear from him. It's all Harbaugh. But to circle it all the way back to Micah yeah, Parsons, right. he, oh, he is bad, a, a member. He is probably the face and the voice, quite literally, yeah. of a new generation of player. Yeah. And Podcasters. they have their – well, that's <laughs> what – Podcasters, well, that's right. It's not just that. Well, it's more than that. Yeah. It's players who believe that they should comment on anything and everything they want to and don't have the same understanding – that players of your generation did of the impact that might have on other yeah. people. Right. And, and I, I don't know that this is just specific to sports. It's a generational thing. Yeah. Sure is. Um, I, I have children who are that age, so right. I see it. Their entire lives live out much more publicly what, I mean, what, than ours ever did. And what, when there are ramifications for that, right. they don't fully grasp, well, wait a minute, that 
I just said what I thought. What could right. possibly be wrong with that? Right. But the, the problem is I think a lot of kids and a lot of players are learning to be more careful with their words because they are exposed to all that stuff. The problem is Micah Parsons has not gotten to that point yet, and it's fine. It's not hurting him. It's not hurting the team. It's helping all of us. But at some point, you just have to understand that what you're going to say, you're going to open yourself up to this criticism. Because. If you don't want to be open up to this criticism, then be quiet. Yeah. And when you make mistakes, because we talk for a living, I've made mistakes on here. You come up and you say, sure. this is what I said. This is what I... Now, we've got a tough update to share. Our quarterback, Doc Prescott, is officially out for the rest of the season due to a serious hamstring injury. Let's get into the details and break down what this means for the Cowboys as we move forward. And don't forget if you're a dedicated Cowboys fan, hit that subscribe button because we'll keep you posted on everything happening with the team. So here's the situation, after a week of weighing his options, Doc Prescott has decided to undergo season-ending surgery on his injured right hamstring. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones made the announcement earlier today, explaining that Prescott consulted multiple doctors before making this choice. It's not an easy decision, but ultimately, it's the one that gives him the best chance of making a full recovery. The estimated recovery time is around three months, meaning Doc won't be back on the field until well after this season wraps up. For Doc, this is heartbreaking. He came into the season with big dreams and the backing of a record-breaking contract. Just before week one, Doc signed a four-year deal worth $60 million per season, making it the highest annual salary in NFL history. His first game of the season showed so much promise as he led the Cowboys to a dominant win over the Cleveland Browns. Expectations were sky high, but now at 3-6, the Cowboys' road to the playoffs has hit a major roadblock. And Cowboys Nation, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think the Cowboys can rally? Without Doc, let us know in the comments below. In Doc's absence, we've seen Cooper Rush step up as QB1, with 2021 first-round pick Trey Lance also taking some snaps. But let's be honest, their performance last Sunday against the Eagles didn't inspire much confidence. Rush and Lance combined for only 66 passing yards on 29 attempts, and the offense struggled with five turnovers. It's clear they'll need to step up their game if we're going to compete in the remaining eight games. When asked if that Cowboys might look outside the organization for a new quarterback, Jerry Jones kept things pretty open-ended. He hinted that the team's solution might be within, saying, I don't know that the answer is outside the organization. So, as of now, it looks like we'll be sticking with Cooper Rush as QB1 when we face the Texans this Monday. Now, here's a question for y'all. Do you think the Cowboys should bring in a new quarterback to help us out this season, or do you believe we should work with? What we've got, vote in our community poll, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. It's hard not to think about what could have been this season. Doc finished with 11 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, and a career-low 86 passer rating. After three consecutive 12-win seasons and a career-best performance in 2023, he had every reason to expect big things this year. And it's tough to see that journey cut short due to injury. But Cowboys fans know we're resilient, and while losing Doc is a blow, we've still got a team full of talent that's ready to fight. We've been through challenges before, and we're not giving up now. So let's rally behind Cooper Rush and Trey Lance and see how far they can take us. Remember, if you're as passionate about the Cowboys as we are, make sure to subscribe to Cowboys News TV for all the latest updates on Doc's recovery and the team's journey. Thanks for tuning in, and let's keep pushing forward, Cowboys Nation.